All right, so today we're looking at 6-2, confidence intervals for the mean. Um, this is when originally we we're looking at small samples, but primarily we focus on if sigma, so our population standard deviation is unknown. This is gonna be very similar for when we were finding the confidence intervals for the mean when sigma was known, except we're, we're going to use a T distribution table instead of a normal distribution table. So the definition, so if the distribution of a random variable X is approximately normal, then T equals X bar minus mu divided by our sample standard deviation divided by the square root of N. So we slightly change our Z score distribution. Um, instead of using sigma, we're using S. Other than that, it stays the same. Our critical values of T are denoted by T with a subscript of C. And there are several properties of the T distribution. So we're gonna go through those. The first one is that the mean, median, and mode are equal to zero. Okay. Um, the T distribution, it's here. These are kind of out of order from what's in your book. So I'm gonna kind of abbreviate some of these. Um, so we're gonna skip to number three real quick. The T distribution is bell-shaped. And symmetric. Our fourth one is that the area under the curve is equal to one. Um, and then let's see here. I cut some of these. Some of these you do not need to know or worry about. Um, so I'm gonna move back up to our second one. So with looking at the T distribution, it's a family of curves as you can kind of see in this picture below. Okay. And that's all based off of your degrees of freedom. So the T distribution is a family of curves. Each determined by a parameter called the degrees of freedom. Um, so the degrees of freedom are the number of choices, let's see, which are the number of free choices left after a sample statistic x bar is calculated. Okay. And the formula we use for the degrees of freedom, we're gonna abbreviate DF, is going to equal N minus one so our sample size minus one. And we're gonna talk about a real world example of why we always subtract one from that degrees of freedom in class tomorrow. All right, and then our fifth characteristic that we need to know is that as the degrees of freedom
increase. The T distribution approaches the standard normal distribution. as shown in the figure. Okay. For n, oops, how about the right four? For n greater than or equal to 30, the T distribution is close to the standard normal distribution. Okay. So for the most part, bell-shaped and symmetric and the area under the curve equal to one, those two are the same thing as our normal distribution. The thing that changes is that because um, we don't know the population standard deviation, we can't say that the sample is normally distributed. So it kind of changes some things. Okay. So with that, since we have a new distribution, we're gonna be using table five of appendix B um, to find our critical values. And I'm actually gonna be posting a different table um, that just shows you more values for the degrees of freedom since this one only goes to 29. Um, just to help you have a wider range of values, okay? So unlike the Z table, critical values for a specific confidence interval can be found in the column headed by C in the appropriate degrees of freedom. So when we look at this table, we're gonna be looking at the top row um, for the level of confidence. And then we're gonna be looking at degrees of freedom along the left. So for the first example, find the critical value TC for 95% confidence when the sample size is 14. Okay, so we're looking for when C is 0.95 and then our sample size is 14. Since our sample size is 14, that means our degrees of freedom is 14 minus one, which equals 13. And our T of 0.95, our critical value. So if we go to 13 on our table for 0.95, we get the critical value 2.160. Okay. All right, let's look at the next one. Find the critical value for a 90% confidence when the sample size is 22. So start off with finding your degrees of freedom. So 22 minus one equals 21. So our critical value for 90%. So we go down to 21 and looking at 90, we get the critical value 1.721. Okay. All right, so now if we want to look at, um, okay, so for 30 or more degrees of freedom, the critical values for the T distribution are close to the corresponding critical values for the normal distribution. Um, so frequently we use the infinity degrees of freedom correspond exactly to the normal distribution. Um, like I said, I'm going to give you a larger table that's gonna show you some more of those T distributions, um, or I'm sorry, critical values for when n is greater than 30. You can also use your graphing calculator to find those. Um, and I can show you how to do that as well if you would like. All right, so looking at our steps to find the confidence intervals for t distribution. Um, for the most part, these are gonna be the same as what we've already seen. First, we wanna verify that the population standard deviation is unknown. We have a random sample. Okay. 
and that the population is normally distributed. or n is greater than or equal to 30. Okay. Second, we're going to find n x bar and s. Okay, so our n is just our sample size. Remember x bar is our summation of all of our data entries divided by n. And then we have our formula for the sample standard deviation, which is the square root of the sum, of the quantity of x minus x bar squared divided by n minus one. Or we can just use our graphing calculator, which is what I advise. Okay. Once we've done that, then we're going to Let's see here, we're going to identify the degrees of freedom and our critical value TC. Okay, so remember the degrees of freedom equals N minus one and TC, our critical values, are going to come from table five. All right, our fourth step is we're going to find the margin of error. E, all right, using our formula E equals TC times S divided by the square root of N. So very similar to what we've seen before. And then there should be a step five here. We're going to um, calculate the confidence interval. Okay, so for this one we're doing our point estimate, which is our x bar minus e, which is less than our mean, which is less than x bar plus e. Okay. All right. So we have two examples here. Um, let's go ahead and do the first one just so you have one in your notes and then we'll do the others in class together. So you really select 16 coffee shops and measure the temperature of the coffee sold at each. So right now we know N equals 16. So the sample mean temperature is 160 de 62 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, with the sample standard deviation of 10. So S equals 10.0 degrees Fahrenheit. Find the 95% confidence interval for the mean temperature. So that means our C value is 0.95. All right, so now that we've found all of that, we know that we don't know our population standard deviation because we were given the sample standard deviation. We know the population is normally distributed. So we can go further. We found N, X bar, and S, because that was all given to us. So now we want to find um, our degrees of freedom. And since N was 16, our degrees of freedom is 5. So now we want to find our critical value. So T of 0.95 when degrees of freedom is 15. Okay, so 0.95, so looking here, and our degrees of freedom 15 gives us the critical value 2.131. Okay, so now we want to calculate our margin of error. So we're going to take 2.131 times our sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n, which was 16. So if we calculate that, we 
And we round, remember, to the same as our X bar for our point estimate. So we're gonna have 5.3. All right, so now to write that confidence interval, we're taking our sample mean, 162.0, minus our margin of error, which is going to be less than 162.0 plus 5.3. I'm running out of room, sorry. So if we subtract those, we get 156.7 degrees Fahrenheit is less than our mean, which is less than 167.3 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so I want you to go ahead and try the next one. And then we're gonna talk about um, how to tell the difference between looking for the normal distribution and using our critical values of Z or using our critical values of T with the T distribution. 